So the D over H ratio can be used as some kind of fingerprint for uh, formation of the solar system to constrain the history of the solar system. The reason is that the D over H ratio was basically formed during uh, the Big Bang. Uh, so in the fir few, uh, first few seconds of the Big Bang, there was a phase called primordial, primordial uh, nucleosynthesis. That means only for a very short time elements formed, light elements, so mainly hydrogen, helium. <clears throat> and during that time also the ratio of D over H was somehow fixed to a value of about uh, 25 parts per million. And then in the later phases of the development of the universe, uh, later on young stars formed. And in this uh, stars, heavier elements were formed during nucleosynthesis in stars. And so this is a process which since then is ongoing, basically creating heavier and heavier elements. The early stars were very large and um, uh, uh, just burned for a very short time and, um, <clears throat> and so on and so on. And uh, in this phase also deuterium was created, but all the deuterium which was created do, uh, by the nuclear fusion basically uh, burned to heavier elements. So uh, in, in uh, what we can say that the original elements uh, we had were hydrogen and this uh, hydrogen uh, so to speak, the fuel of the stars and was the fuel of the stars and the deuterium, uh, so to speak, in the hydrogen was just uh, slowly uh, <clears throat> uh, decreasing so that nowadays we should expect to have a little bit lower D over H ratio than during the Big Bang. And indeed, uh, if we measure the D over H ratio in uh, uh, in the interstellar medium, for instance, in our galaxy, we see lower values. So nowadays we see something like maybe between 15 and 20 parts per million. And um, uh, if we now jump to our solar system, which formed about 4.5 billion years ago, we had uh, the uh, uh, situation that, of course, this uh, 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 protoplanetary disk from which the solar system formed consists mainly of hydrogen and uh, uh, dust and, <clears throat> of course, also some other gases which formed in the interstellar medium. Uh, one important gas in this context is uh, water vapor. And this water vapor formed in the interstellar medium. And while it formed, um, the D over H ratio in the water changed. It was different. It was enriched compared uh, to the D over H ratio in the hydrogen. Uh, the processes which were responsible for that uh, um, happened at very low temperatures, maybe temperatures at 10 Kelvin and under illumination of uh, uh, light from uh, young stars, uh, which were very bright in the uh, ultraviolet. And in this condition, it could happen that the D over H ratio was enriched by a large factor compared to what we had in the hydrogen. And uh, in uh, some uh, observations, even enrichments up to 1%, uh, so from 25 ppm to 10,000 ppm have been observed. If we now imagine that uh, our solar system formed somewhere in the Milky Way in such a cloud which collapsed, a cloud of gas and dust which collapsed, and uh, also a cloud which contained uh, water, among other things. Um, it happened that uh, uh, in the inner part of this disk, the uh, so-called um, isotopic exchange reaction happens, happened. So we had, um, uh, we had this uh, huge amount of hydrogen, which is uh, more than 99% of the mass, from which also the sun formed. and. Uh, from which uh, basically the giant planets formed. Jupiter, for instance, formed about one million years after the solar system uh, started to form. But we had, uh, as I mentioned, also some amounts of water, and uh, this was somehow mixed in the disk. And now uh, in an inner part, which was called, uh, which is characterized by the so-called snow line, meaning that it was warm enough that the water could be in a gaseous form, and so the ice sublimated. Uh, in this uh, area and uh, if when in, uh, uh, under the conditions that at the same time the temperature and pressure was high enough, typically 600 to 800 Kelvin and maybe pressures in the range of one millibar or so, uh, it happened that uh, water equilibrated. Uh, what does it mean? It means that uh, we had um, this original value which was a little bit lower than 25 ppm in the hydrogen. It was, in fact, uh, so that is what we know from the Sun, for instance, or the D over H ratio of hydrogen in Jupiter and Saturn. It was about 21 ppm, 4.57 million years ago, billion years ago. So it means that the hydrogen atoms from the water 
uh, were exchanged by hydrogen atoms uh, from the um, hydrogen, from the H2 and H ga uh, gas, um, uh, with the effect that the uh, D over H ratio in the water, which was maybe very high, as, as I said before, maybe 10,000 or even up to 10,000 parts per million, equilibrated to 21 parts per million. And uh, so this happened in the, in the inner solar system uh, with, uh, uh, with, a, with a result that uh, we had maybe uh, up to half of the snow line, maybe up to the orbit of the Earth. Um, snow line, by the way, changed with the time uh, from maybe 25 uh, astronomical units to three and a half. But at least within the snow line, we had, a, uh, we had an area where these conditions of the exchange of uh, uh, hydrogen atoms happened and uh, where the equilibrated water formed. Uh, then a little bit further out, we were still within the snow line, but the uh, pressure and temperature was not high enough to have these isotopic exchange reactions. But still, we had gaseous water, and so in this area, we got some mixture of the high D over H ratio water with the low, over day, uh, low D over H ratio water uh, of the so-called equilibrated water. As a result, uh, we should expect a gradient in D over H with heliocentric distance. So very low D over H, 21 ppm, uh, maybe near to the orbit of Mercury or so, and higher values towards the snow line. And uh, the exact uh, gradient is not known, but in principle, it's, it's, I mean, I would say the boundaries are somehow in the range of 21 ppm at the low side, and uh, maybe uh, something like uh, uh, um, uh, 500 or 1000 ppm at the high side. This happened just in the first uh, couple of millions of years when the solar system formed and uh, if we nowadays uh, sample material from the solar system and measure the D over H ratio in water, uh, we can uh, uh, say in which heliocentric distance this material formed when the solar system formed. And so th therefore it's a very good method, some kind of fingerprint of matter the D of H ratio in water to learn where the uh, material we are investigating was uh, formed and uh, originates from. Of course, we in this context, we have to take into account that deuterium is a stable isotope. That means, in, pr uh, in principle, in this time of, of uh, since the formation of the universe, uh, basically, if we wouldn't have any, any uh, reactions like burning deuterium in stars, it would be stable. So it's an extremely stable isotope, and it's not produced, uh, at least it's not released. So therefore, we can uh, 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 use this as a fingerprint, as, a, as tracing back the history of the universe. And of course, we can use D of H not only for uh, investigating our solar system, but also uh, processes uh, in our galaxy and extragalactic processes. Specifically in our solar system, of course, uh, we have uh, different kind of planets like the giant planets, the gas planets, and they consist uh, to a large amount of hydrogen. So we would expect low D over H ratios, and indeed that is what is observed, for instance, in Jupiter and Saturn, where the D over H ratio is basically uh, protosolar, that's 21 ppm. And then we have the ice giants, uh, 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 Uranus and Neptune. They are called ice giants because they not only consist of uh, hydrogen, but to a, a large amount also of ices. And uh, when this planet formed, again, we had this isotopic exchange reactions, maybe similar to what happened in the inner solar system during this water equilibration, but this time in the other, other, uh, the other way around. That means the low D over H ratio of hydrogen was enriched by water, so that nowadays we measure higher D over H ratios in the uh, um, hydrogen of uh, uh, the ice giants, something like about uh, instead of 21 ppm, we have something like 45 ppm. We can use this even to constrain uh, to uh, how many percent they consist of ice and of silicates in the interior. Uh, on the other hand, we have some free parameters here. We do not know uh, what the original D of H ratio of the ices uh, was uh, from which they formed or which uh, uh, almost uh, f um, uh, formed these two planets. Uh, but uh, anyway, it's, 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 it's one constraint to tell us about the history of how this uh, ice giants formed.